Hey book lovers, welcome to While I Read. Well, it's time for my October reading wrap up and I'm going to tell you about all the books that I read during the spooky month of October. So my reading was actually all over the place this month. I read 10 books in all, which is really good for me. The past two months combined, I only read eight books. So I'm really glad that I was able to get some more reading done this month. Looking at the types or genres of books that I read, I read three middle grade books, one fantasy, four mystery thrillers, and two cozy books. So let's get started with the reading wrap up with me telling you about all of these books that I read. So we'll start with the three middle grade books. These are all books that I read aloud to Sarah this month. They're just all really good fallish books with kind of a Halloween theme. So the first one that I'll talk about is The Penderwicks on Gardam Street by Jean Birdsall. So this book is about four sisters and just about their time growing up on Gardam Street. This book is actually a sequel. The first book in the series is The Penderwicks. And I believe that there are five books in this series in all. This one, The Penderwicks on Gardam Street, is my favorite one. And it's the best one to read in the fall because it's set in the fall in September, October, early November. And it has a chapter that's set on Halloween where the sisters are trick-or-treating. But it's, it's about the sisters and their dad. Their dad is widowed and he is starting to date again. It's actually not something that he really wants to do, but they find a letter from their mother before she died where she wanted him to eventually start dating again, so he's doing it, but none of them are happy about it. But it's also just a really good story of the sisters just having fun times together and doing fun childhood things. So I read this book out loud to Sarah this month. Sarah really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed getting to share it with her. So it's a good fallish book that you should read. Another book that I read to Sarah this month was Halliday Inn by James Howe. I have a copy of that book somewhere, but I couldn't find it, so I'll just pop a picture of it up. But Halliday Inn is in the Benicula series. I believe it's the second book in that series, but you could definitely read it as a standalone book. It's from the point of view of a dog named Harold and Harold and his co-pet Chester. Um, their family is going on a vacation and they board Harold and Chester at this place called Chateau Bow Wow, which seems like it's a nice place for them to stay, but Chester is convinced that there's just some, some nefarious things going on there. There are a couple of Dotsons who howl all the time, and Chester is convinced that they're really werewolves. And then the people who run the place just seem a little bit sketchy. And then a couple of dogs disappear. And so it's just a fun mystery. It's, you know, from the point of view of animals, so that's kind of funny. Sarah really enjoyed it when I was reading it out loud to her. I read it as a kid, and I really enjoyed it then. So it's just a quick, fun read. And the last middle grade book I'll talk about that I read this month is The Green Ghost of Appleville by Jean Marzolo. I read this book out loud to Sarah and I almost didn't include it in the wrap up because it's just, it's such a tiny, short book. It's just a, a very short chapter book, but I did read it, so I'm including it. It's a really fun book about these kids on this, who live on this street, and there is a farmhouse on the street that is rumored to be haunted. And it's been kind of abandoned, but just recently, 
a boy and his grandma have moved into that house. And so they're planning on having a Halloween party, but some of the kids are afraid to go to the Halloween party because they think that that house really is haunted. So it's just about the kids kind of getting to know this new family, having some fun with Halloween. It's got a little bit of spookiness in it. So Sarah thought this book was really funny. I actually read it out loud to her in one sitting. Um, it, it took us a while. It probably took us close to an hour, but she was really enjoying it. So we just read the whole book in that one sitting. And it's just a fun, cute Halloween book. Next, let's talk about the fantasy genre. I read one book in the fantasy genre this month, and that was The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. My best friend Amy actually recommended this book to me because she was reading it and really enjoying it, and I really appreciate Amy recommending this book because it was so good. It's described as a cottage core romanticy, and that really is kind of the perfect description for it. So it's about this woman named Kiela, and she lives in a big city called Elysium, and she is a librarian in the great library in that city. But there's a revolution going on, and the library is about to be burned. So Kiela escapes in a boat with all of the spell books that she can carry from the library. She also has a sidekick who is a sentient plant named Kaz. And so Kiela and Kaz escape, and they end up going to the island where Kiela grew up, but hasn't been there since she was about nine years old because her family moved to the city at that age. And so they go there because she knows that there is still a house there that her parents own where she can stay. Of course, her parents are, are dead now. But they go to this island, and so they stay in this house, and it turns out the house is very dilapidated, so Kiela and Kaz have to fix it up. Kiela has to come up with some kind of way to make a living on the island. Some of the funny parts are that Kiela is very introverted. When she was living at the library, she would barely talk to anyone. She was just sort of doing her research and her shelving books, and she was perfectly happy doing that. But on the island, she has to talk to people. She has to talk to her neighbor, her kind of handsome neighbor that she starts having a romance with, and then with some of the others in the village because she starts a business selling jam and also kind of selling some magical remedies that can help the people on the island. It's a lot like a Hallmark book, but it does have, you know, those fantasy elements like Kiela is a blue person, which is kind of cool. And there are centaurs on the island. There are goat people. There are people who have wings. So it's just all kinds of different people, different creatures that are on this island. There are some magical things going on. The, these terrible magical storms come to the island sometimes and, you know, are very dangerous. And so it's about Kiela learning to trust people and also learning about some of the things that she can do to help people. It was a very cozy book. I loved the scenes where she was working on fixing up her house and her garden. And it was also very funny as she did her best to avoid talking to people, but she had to sometimes. So I definitely recommend The Spell Shop. It was just a great cozy book. Next in the mystery thriller genre, which is the genre that I almost always read the most of, and this month was no exception. I read four mystery thrillers. The first one was The Hitchcock Hotel by Stephanie Robel. So this is about this group of college friends that is getting together at this inn or hotel that one of the friends has started called the Hitchcock Hotel. And it's themed after Alfred Hitchcock movies. So he's got movie memorabilia all over the hotel. He has a screening room where Hitchcock movies are shown 24-7. So it is definitely pretty creepy. Like, it's not somewhere I would want to go and stay. I think I would be very creeped out by that. 
but he's invited this group of college friends. I'm trying to remember how, how many of them there are. I think there are four in all, the guy and then three friends that he invited, but I may be wrong about that. It may be that there were five of them. But anyway, he's invited them to come and stay at the hotel for a weekend. And interestingly, even though all of these people were friends in college, they also have a lot of baggage. Something happened during their last year at college, and you get hints of it throughout, but you don't know exactly what it was. And so a lot of them don't really want to come and stay at this hotel, but for various reasons, they do. And you kind of know that something sinister is going on the whole time that they're staying there. I liked this book. It kept me interested the whole time. I kept thinking, though, thank goodness that I don't have friends like these people. Like, even in the flashback chapters from when they were in college, even though they're supposedly friends, they were always kind of mean to each other. And I'm like, do people really act like this? Because, yeah, I know people who are mean, but I don't think of those people as my friends. And if people talk to me the way that these supposed friends talk to each other, I would not think of them as my friends and I would not hang out with them. So that was something I kept thinking about as I was reading this book. Thank goodness I have real friends and not friends like the people in this book. But it was a good book. Like I said, it had that sinister atmosphere throughout. You were trying to figure out what happened. It did a good job of kind of slowly revealing what had actually happened in college. Like you got some things that you thought, oh, that's what happened. But then you'd find out something else and you're like, oh, that happened too. So like I said, it was good as far as making me want to keep reading. I liked the twist. I, I didn't suspect the twist. I didn't really like the characters in the book, but I don't think you were really supposed to. The next book I read in the mystery thriller genre, really this one was more of a mystery than a thriller. And it is called St. Simon's Island, A Stella Bankwell Mystery by Rhonda Rich. So I picked this book up because it is set in Georgia. Some of it's set in Atlanta, in the Buckhead area with all of these rich people. And then a little of it is set in the North Georgia mountains. But then the majority of it, as the title would tell you, is set on St. Simon's Island. So it's about a woman named Stella Bankwell who is married to this rich man in Atlanta. She grew up in kind of a poor home in the mountains, but she was working in Atlanta and she met this rich guy who seemed great and the first few years of their marriage were great. But as the book is starting, they're going through some difficult times in their marriage and the guy, she finds out that the guy has cheated on her. And so she has this scene that's really funny, but also very embarrassing for in a country club at a dinner. I won't tell everything that happens because you sort of are left wondering about that, you know, exactly what has happened for the first part of the book. But it is funny, although it will also make you mad. It reminded me a lot of Mary Kay Andrews' books. Like, she has a lot of really funny Southern books that have this sort of premise of the husband cheating on the wife and the wife making a huge scene about it that, you know, just affects the rest of the book. I don't exactly love that because, you know, a husband cheating on a wife is not really a funny thing to happen. But the book is good and it kind of shows, you know, it's like he deserves it. He deserves for her to make a scene about it. So anyway, she goes to St. Simon's Island because she has some friends there where she can stay. And St. Simon's Island is this beautiful island off the coast of Georgia. I've only been once. I really want to go again. And this book made me want to go again. And so while she's there, she starts discovering that not only was her husband cheating on her, but he was also doing some illegal things and some things that may have an effect on her as well. So it's about her figuring out exactly what her husband was doing and what she can do to bring him down and to prove that she was not involved in any of this illegal activity. There is a former Georgia governor who has a home on the island who Stella actually knows because he's originally also from the mountains. 
and he ends up helping Stella. She also has some other people that she meets, you know, kind of a romantic interest in who's there, and one of her good friends from Atlanta who comes to St. Simon's Island to help her. So it's a good book. There were a few parts where I got a little bored because character development is a big part of this book. And I enjoy that. I enjoy reading about these Southern characters. But it seemed like every minor character who came into the book, however briefly, you would have to get this whole background of where that person was born and who that person's parents were and why that person is in the job that they're in. And it got a little boring. And this is coming from somebody who loves character development, who loves these Southern characters. But I kind of felt like the author went a bit overboard with having all of these descriptions when at some points I'm like, let's just get on with the book and find out what's happening because this character is not important at all. But overall, I enjoyed the book. There's a sequel to it called Sapelo Island, and it's another Stella Bankwell mystery. So I'm looking forward to reading that one soon. The final book in the mystery thriller genre that I read this month was Whisper Island by Carissa Ann Lynch. And this book I read in like a day and a half. Like it was a really quick read. I think I had finished one book on a Friday and I just wanted something to read for the weekend and I found this book on my Kindle and I just read it really quickly. And then like maybe a week later as I was looking back at the books I read, I was like, Whisper Island, what is that? And I, I couldn't even remember the book. So it was good while I was reading it. It kept me reading. I read it really quickly, but definitely not that memorable. So it's about these four college friends who get to know each other and they end up going and staying on this Alaskan island called Whisper Island. And it's a deserted island, but it has a house on it where they can stay. These friends are all art majors and so they're going there to work on their art. But they discover that it's actually not just the four friends who are there. There's also one of the friend's brother and his girlfriend who were staying there. And that brother happens to be the ex-boyfriend of one of the friends. So that adds some drama to it. Then once they get there, they discover that the house that there were these beautiful pictures of, like it was so nice, is actually very dilapidated, just falling apart. But once they're there on the island, it's so isolated that there's not really that much they can do, at least not immediately. So they start settling in, but almost immediately some weird things start happening. Someone ends up dead. And so they're trying to figure out who is the killer. Is there someone else there on the island with them, some psychopath who is murdering them? Or is it one of them who is the murderer? They all have some secrets in their past that you find out throughout the book. And it's written in different points of view from all of the people who are staying on that island. So like I said, it was very suspenseful. It was a quick read, one that I didn't really have to think that much about. I enjoyed it while I was reading it. It wasn't that memorable. I do remember thinking the same thing as I read that one as I was reading um, The Hitchcock Hotel that these people are supposed to be friends, but they're really pretty mean to each other. And again, I'm glad that I don't have friends like that. I always wonder, are there real people who, like, they're surrounded by friends who are just kind of mean to them most of the time? Because that's really sad. Like, I don't have a huge group of friends. I have a few people who I consider my close friends, but they're people who are nice to me. I wouldn't hang out to people if they, if I felt like they were constantly talking about me behind my back or just making these little snide remarks to me. I don't want friends like that. So I don't know. I've been really pondering friendships as I've read my mystery thriller books this month. The last two books that I read this month would be considered cozy books. So I read The Great Hippopotamus Hotel by Alexander McCall Smith, which is in his number one ladies detective agency series. I love that series and I love Alexander McCall Smith. So in this book, which is like, I want to say number 24 in the series, I know it's, you know, that series has been around for a long time. I haven't read all of the books in it. 
but I've read a lot of them. So it's about this woman named Precious Ramatswe, and she's known as Ma Ramatswe, which I believe Ma is maybe something like Mrs. I'm not sure exactly, but all of the women are known by Ma and their last name. So Ma Ramatswe has this detective agency. Her partner in her business is Ma Makutsi. And so the books are about them solving mysteries that people bring to them, to their detective agency. Sometimes there's murder, but usually there's not. In this book, there was there's no murder. But this man who runs a hotel called the Great Hippopotamus Hotel asked for their help because some strange things have been happening at the hotel, and he thinks that someone is trying to run the hotel out of business. Things have been happening, like some of the guests have gotten food poisoning, somebody found a scorpion in their shoe, some of the laundry has gone missing. So things like that, a couple of them that could be very dangerous, nobody has been killed or anything like that, but it, it there are some strange things happening there. And so Mara Matsue and Mama Kutsi start looking into what has been happening? There's also some help from Ma Potakwani, who runs what they call the orphan farm. Like she looks after orphan children and has, you know, a place for them to live. And so this these books are all about the characters and also all about the African country of Botswana. And every time I read these books, I'm like, I want to go to Botswana and just immerse myself in the culture there because it just seems like such a great place from these books. These books, while the, the mystery is interesting and you do want to find out what happens, the main point of it is just to immerse yourself in these characters, to enjoy their musings about life and about friendship. I always highlight lines in these books because I just enjoy what Mara Matsue has to say about life so much. So the last book that I read this month that I just finished last night is Murder in Highbury by, by Vanessa Kelly. And so I was so excited for this book because it is the first book in a cozy mystery series based on the character of Emma. The book Emma by Jane Austen is my favorite book of all time. I just love Emma so much. And so whenever there's any kind of continuation of the story of Emma, I'm always really excited to read it. And then usually I don't like it as much as I'm hoping that I would. I don't think that's necessarily a fault of the books themselves as just that I love the original book, Emma, and nothing is ever going to be as good as that one to me. But Murder in Highbury actually was a very good cozy mystery that kept me interested the whole time. So the book starts when Emma and her friend Harriet, who are both married now, Emma's married to Mr. Knightley, and Harriet is married to Robert Martin. That, that happened at the end of the original book, Emma. Okay, I had to stop my review for a minute there because I realized I was giving all kinds of spoilers about the original Emma book, and I was probably going too much into a summary of that book rather than a summary of this book. So let me just back up and give you a summary of this book that I read, Murder in Highbury. So Emma and Harriet find the dead body of Mrs. Elton, who is one of the most hated characters in the original Emma book. And so they're trying to discover what happened. Mr. Knightley, Emma's husband, is a magistrate. And so he is greatly involved in the investigation. There's also a doctor, Dr. Hughes, who is the coroner. And there's also a constable, Constable Sharp, who is investigating. And so, of course, Emma has to start investigating and trying to figure out what happened. There are several people who are suspicious in this death. The character of Miss Bates, who in the original Emma book is this spinster lady who is just as sweet as she can be, but she talks all the time. 
And even though Emma knows that she's a good person, she kind of drives Emma crazy a little bit. So she has a bit of, she's a bit suspicious that she may have possibly murdered Mrs. Elton. So Emma's trying to prove that Mrs. Bates had nothing to do with it. There are also others who are suspicious. And so it's about Emma investigating Mr. Knightley investigating in his position as magistrate and sort of trying to prevent Emma from doing anything dangerous. There are lots of characters from the original books that it's great to read about them and see what they're doing now in this author's version of what happens next. I enjoyed the book. I did feel that some of the characters really didn't, they didn't behave in the same way that they did in the original Emma. There was one character in particular who I kept thinking, this is not that character. That's not what this person would do. Then it did turn out that there was a reason for that. I can't really say anything else without spoiling this book, but it was a good book. I read it quickly. I'm definitely going to read the other books in this series as they come out. So there you have it. Those are the books that I read in October. Have you read any of these books or do any of these sound good, like something you want to pick up? What have you read this month? Please let me know in the comments. If you like book reviews and recommendations, please subscribe to my channel. Now, go take a hike while I read.